there's hardly any doubt that carbohydrates plays a great role in the obesity epidemic we see nearly all over the world. Whether it's developing countries or developed countries, we see obesity rising nearly everywhere, type 2 diabetes rising nearly everywhere. We're going to talk about this now and you'll get to understand something about what role it plays for getting overweight. I'm Dr. Mazo Sain. Do subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell. Do share this video with your friends and family so that they know about this. And uh, you're welcome to write to us if you want us to uh, make a video on a certain subject. And we look into it and see maybe if we can do that video that you want. Today, we're talking about carbohydrates. You can see from the picture, it's quite uh, a wide variety of things. It can be cakes, breads, pasta, and uh, Sugars, of course, we all know that. Drinks, juices, and so on. Fruits can contain carbohydrates uh, and do contain a lot of carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are one among our three major macronutrients. You could also al add alcohol to this list. But uh, uh, the most uh, uh, relevant in this regard right now is carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. and Right now, we're going to talk about carbohydrates. Before we go there, uh, I'll just talk briefly about low glycemic index and high glycemic index. There's also another thing we could talk about, glycemic load. But right now, we'll just talk about low glycemic food and high glycemic food. So when we eat something, if we eat something that spikes our blood glucose level very rapidly and uh, to a great extent, then we talk about a high glycemic food that you see on the right side. Now, this could be, say, if you have a soft drink, if you have uh, juices, if you have a banana, if you have anything that has a high content of carbs or anything that is very easily absorbed into the body. So it could also be the form of the uh, item. Say, if you eat an apple, uh, it would be different from eating an apple or taking the juices. If you take an apple juice, you will spike your blood glucose level sooner rather than if you eat an apple. So the more uh, processed an item is, usually the larger its uh, glycemic index would be. If you have pasta that has been cooked, well, just to take an example, uh, you will spike your uh, glucose level faster than if you were to eat it raw. Just to give an example. So the more, more easily it's digested, the more easily it's absorbed, the more likely it will uh, spike your uh, glucose level. And uh, if you, on the other hand, have food that are, have a low glycemic index, for instance, proteins uh, and meat, uh, chicken uh, and so on, and a number of vegetables also, in that case, you don't spike your insulin in the same way and you have less of an insulin response because the body doesn't need to work that much. We don't need to secrete as much insulin to bring the glucose level down again. In the case of high glycemic food, we have to keep one thing in mind. The amount of high glycemic food we eat today with all the processed food, cakes, chocolates, shakes, uh, soft drinks, our body has not known this for many million years. It had only known this for a few hundred years. All the processed kind of things and everything where the body doesn't really need to work, it's ready to be absorbed, goes directly into the bloodstream, spikes our insulin, spikes our blood glucose, spikes our insulin. So the body doesn't know how to handle this. What happens is then you have an overshot of insulin. As you can see on the right side, high glycemic food, there's uh, an overreaction uh, from the body because it doesn't know how to deal with it and it ends up with the blood glucose going so low it doesn't need to be hyperglycemic but from the level that you are used to it feels like it's going too low and you start to have your cravings. Uh, this is where we see we go under the uh, uh, dotted line. You don't want that because then it is that you want to eat something again because you are simply because you are uh, uh, having the cravings. So low glycemic food is less likely to give you cravings. High glycemic food is more likely to give you uh, cravings. Uh, if we look at the macronutrients, in, before we start uh, talking about the carbs, uh, the, car the carbohydrates, nearly 90% or even more, is turned into blood glucose. Uh, and it spikes the blood glucose rapidly 
the insulin is uh, triggered right away and it brings our blood glucose level down again within one, two, three, four hours. If you take proteins, roughly 50% of the proteins are turned into glucose. It does spike our blood glucose to some extent, but it's a slower response and it's not as dramatic as with the carbohydrates. And finally, and, and with the protein, we have to keep in mind, it will uh, keep your blood glucose level higher for a longer time than if you take carbohydrates. Now, fats, only 10% is turned into glucose and it hardly even spikes your blood glucose and the insulin response is negligible, hardly there. Might be there's some debate about that, but it's not really much of an insulin response because the blood glucose level has not been spiked. Uh, so this is a graph, we'll get back to this several times. Likewise with the other one, with the, with the, the difference between the uh, uh, high glycemic and low glycemic um, food. Now, we have something called net carbs. Net carbs is basically the total carbohydrates minus the uh, dietary fibers. Uh, only a small proportion of the fibers are absorbed by the body and contributes to our energy needs. And most of it is uh, passes through the system and um, we excrete it. So, uh, but the main point here is carbohydrates minus uh, dietary fibers is what we call net carbs. Let look, let's look at certain um, food items. Before we do that, I'll just want to recap on a uh, little thing from our video on normal blood glucose level. If you remember, once we have an, a spike in the blood glucose, the insulin from the pancreas is in, released and it keeps the blood glucose level from going too high, it prevents hyperglycemia. So in a normal uh, adult, uh, average adult, we have roughly one teaspoon of sugar in five liters of blood. So let's look at the different food items. How much sugar do we find there? Look at an apple, for instance. It contains 25 grams of carbohydrates. Taking out the dietary fibers, we are left with 20.6 grams of net carbs. So we have roughly 20 grams of sugar in one apple. This is equivalent to four teaspoons. The blood can hold in a safe way one teaspoon of sugar. Taking one apple, we are adding four teaspoons of sugar. It's going to spike our insulin. A small banana, this is not even the average banana, this is the small banana. It contains a 100 gram banana. It contains 25 uh, uh, grams of carbohydrates, taking out the uh, two, uh, 23 grams of carbohydrates, taking out the 2.3 grams of uh, fibers, we're left with 20.2 grams of, uh, what, 20.4 grams of, um, of net carbs, uh, as there's 2.6 grams of uh, dietary fibers. So 20.4 grams of net carbs in a banana. Again, four teaspoons of sugar that we add to our meal with one single small banana, 20.4 grams. Now consider that if you're diabetic or if you're overweight and you, you try to avoid that one teaspoon in your tea. Right now, if you take one banana, one apple, you're looking at eight teaspoons of sugar that you added to your body. Far more than the teaspoon you are going to use in the tea. So, orange juice, well, we have the same story. 26 grams of sugar in a, a small glass of apple juice and hardly any fibers. So five teaspoons of sugar, five teaspoons of sugar, not four, five teaspoons of sugar, that's going to spike your insulin. The body can hold, the blood can hold one teaspoon safely. More than that, it goes hypoglycemic. The body doesn't want that. It releases insulin, brings down the sugar so that you don't go too high on your glucose, blood glucose. We are going to spike our insulin with this. And as we talked about in another video with the ins about insulin, insulin is a fat sparing and a fat storage hormone. We don't want that. If you're wanting to lose weight, we don't want this. If you compare this to an avocado, 
avocado now that contains 17 grams of carbohydrates but 14 grams of dietary fibers so the net carb is only 3 grams and it contains a great amount of fat we'll talk about that later than for instance an apple or a banana wood or orange juice wood uh, which is another good uh, thing about avocados it contains fat but for right now if you look at the carbohydrates only we got only 3 net grams of carbohydrates which is half a teaspoon it's it's quite obvious that having an avocado is going to spike your blood glucose far less than having an apple a banana or orange juice and if you spike your insulin level less you're going to have less insulin secretion so now let's look at rice uh, I'm from Pakistan and rice is a very popular dish pilau biryani you mentioned it and it's simply fantastic I love it myself but if you want to stay healthy you probably need to reduce it just like I have to so rice contains 29 grams of carbohydrates net carbohydrates that's six teaspoons of sugar in 100 grams of rice compare that to a soft drink coca-cola for instance it contains 10 grams of net carbs in 100 grams of coca-cola now you may ask what is more dangerous is it the rice or is it the cola well from 100 grams of rice gives you six teaspoons and 100 grams of a soft drink gives you two teaspoons so weight to weight comparison well definitely uh, the rice is more dangerous but if you go to the movies you might be able to take say you might take half a soft drink with you into the movie after that you might go and have some fast food take another half a liter of soft drink you're taking one liter of soft drink in a very short time that is equivalent to 100 grams of carbohydrates it's unlikely you'll be able to do the same kind of thing you won't be able to easily eat say 300 grams of rice because it will simply be too much for most people so it's not enough that we just look at what is the carbs content we also need to look at how much can we consume of this item how much can we consume of this food if we can consume more and we really don't have any kind of signal in the body that tells us to stop it then it could be more dangerous even though per weight it may not contain as much as another item so although I'm a great fan of the taste of rice uh, and Pakistani dishes and rice are really fantastic I still want to keep it at a minimum simply because in the long term you would need to there would be a payback time when your body starts giving you trouble so look into that honey honey as you can see 21 grams of honey contains 17 grams of carbohydrates well this is in 21 grams 100 grams of honey contains roughly 85 grams of sugar 85 grams of carbohydrates and we are looking at 17 teaspoons of sugar that's really something the body is not uh, so happy to handle if you look at beef on the other hand so these three uh, rice cola and honey they are high glycemic foods beef on the other hand doesn't contain carbohydrates so it's not going to spike your blood glucose it's not going to want the insulin to be released and bring down the blood glucose because we don't want to be in a hyperglycemic state so beef is not going to trigger that process and it contains uh, proteins and fat we'll talk about that in another video uh, but right now what's important is it doesn't contain carbohydrates so let's just uh, compare some of the items we talked about right now an apple 20 grams 4 teaspoons avocado 3 gram half a teaspoon all right and uh, rice 6 teaspoons in 100 grams of rice cola in a half a liter of cola now before we talked about 100 uh, grams uh, or 100 milliliters but it's unlikely people would be drinking only half uh, 100 milliliters of a uh, soft drink half a liter is probably more realistic number so we're looking at 10 teaspoons so if you were to have some food with rice a soft drink 
and maybe take an apple afterwards. You have then taken 20 teaspoons of sugar in one meal. And that's going to spike your blood glucose. It's going to spike your insulin. Insulin, as you can see in the previous video about insulin, insulin is a fat sparing and fat storage hormone. So if your aim is to lose weight, these food items could probably counter that uh, process. So this concludes our video on carbohydrates. Do subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. Let us know if you want us to make a video on a certain subject. We'll look into it and uh, we'd love you to share this video with your friends and family. And do stay tuned for more videos as we uh, upload them. Thank you for now.